normally low cost airlines are not usually into in flight entertainment. Of course, they tend to fly shorter flights. But we recognize that there's a big demand out there uh, for in flight entertainment over a 12 hour flight from Paris to Asia. And the challenges we've had with existing systems made it very uneconomical. We've even tried in our earlier models to have in seat IFE units on board our planes, but the cost of content from Hollywood, uh, the weight and operational requirements made it very prohibitive. And today we've moved to a portable uh, media player type solution. But that's why we're excited about trying something new because that's the pioneering spirit uh, that we've developed. And one of the great things that allowed us to work with TuneBox to develop this model was a related new um, pioneering system that we have with AirAsia X. We were one of the first airlines to have basically an electronic flight bag in our cockpit, certainly in Asia, where we have an iPad-like device on both the left seat and the right seat of, uh, of the pilots flying the planes, where they have all their charts, all their latest information on a touchscreen based uh, system. By installing that system, and the service needed to serve that, and the communications linked uh, with our operation centers in Kuala Lumpur, we realized there's a piece of infrastructure that's already available on our planes that we can now capitalize on and use uh, to develop a new entertainment-based service for our passengers. So the solution that we're developing quite uniquely with uh, TuneBox is to come up with a model, Sammy's the technology guy, uh, he can certainly take all the questions, but it's really leveraging on some of the server uh, infrastructure that we have, wiring up our cabins with a Wi-Fi transmission so that we can stream content to devices. And devices is key because it removes a lot of the weight and wiring uh, constraints that are really hampering traditional systems. And whether it's using your iPhones, iPads, or Galaxy Tabs, play, uh, Blackberry Playbooks, we think that's the way of the future. More and more of our passengers, every flight we see carrying their own devices. Um, these things now have you know, 12 hours uh, you know, battery time. It's perfect for, for long haul services. And we think offering pay-per-view type content is great because it, it number one, reduces the entry level cost, right? Because if you're just flying a five hour flight, someone may only want to watch one movie, which may not necessarily be the same as someone wanting to watch three or four movies on a longer haul flight. But traditionally, IFE service provides X number of movies, whether you're flying a five hour flight or a 12 hour flight, and you're paying for all of that content, or at least the airline is. And I think this is a great model that makes uh, content much more affordable, uh, we can have a much lower entry point, for example, maybe just three euros uh, for a movie um, and you know, make it much more accessible for everyone and the devices, people already have it with them. So, very excited. Uh, we think this is the way forward. It's a new breakthrough um, and uh, we look forward to working with Sammy and his team to operationalize this. We're hoping to get this out and running uh, by this year itself and I think the, the agreements that we're signing will pave the way to get things developed, get things certified, and get them on board for our passengers um, within this year. Don't you think that there may be some concerns uh, when people read this that, you know, this is an electronic flight bag architecture? Is there a security issue in terms of keeping things separate between cockpit and cabin? Um, I wouldn't be able to uh, answer that today, but um, I could definitely uh, answer that for you with my uh, colleagues. Okay. But there isn't, from what I'm aware, they've structured it in such a way that it actually has uh, divisions you know, within the actual uh, service itself, and it's completely independent. So it shouldn't have any uh, effects at all. Okay. So this will allow Tony to carry on with his tweets on board, but unfortunately he cannot help his spelling. <laughs> Uh, uh, what about power, either in seat or other devices that may become available? Okay. I mean, I think it's something that uh, we will be providing tablets uh, on board the aircraft, uh, and we've got additional battery packs 
So uh, the, the, there should be sufficient battery within those devices to last the flight. Um, that's just obviously an operational issue for us where we have to actually change the batteries um, each, each flight, basically. Uh, but on top of that, I think uh, consumer electronic devices today are getting better and better. Uh, battery life is getting better, battery management is getting better. So I think generally it, it's going up. See, what he doesn't know is we also have a separate initiative to uh, come up with you know, power solutions at the seat because manufacturers always say there's enough power but we know it doesn't happen so uh, we are developing some, uh, some solutions to have uh, power on board our seats. We already have them for our flatbed seats and we're looking to have um, um, sort of power sockets at, at least our hot seats for example. Does your sister have any intention of doing the same? Uh, does AirAsia have any? I think, you know what, what you'll see is we're probably the guinea pigs, so once they see how successful this is and the ancillary income that will come. Um, you know, we were, we were the first, uh, at least within the group, to announce or, or to, to launch uh, pre-selected seats at the time when, uh, you know, free-for-all was the de rigueur amongst low-cost carriers, and we've showed that you can do that and still maintain your turnaround times. They adopted it about a year later. We introduced pre-booked meals. They adopted about a year later. Uh, so it's been a matter of time, you know? Yeah? Exactly. <laughs> so we, we get to try all the new stuff. And uh, I'm sure, I, I'm, I'm sure because if there's money to be made, even on a three hour, four hour flight, there's probably demand for content as well. This is a retrofit solution. Do you want to see it uh, line fit from air framers? The short answer is yes. Yeah. Are you in talks with any air framers to do that? I think we get through the certification process first. Yeah. Can I just ask uh, Sam, are you a UK-based company? Uh, I'm, I'm, uh, yes, my, my background is in this process from London. Uh, but uh, I'm actually based out in Malaysia at the moment. So I'm actually uh, part of the, the, the tune group. So. Your company is based in Asia? Uh, I'm actually uh, Tunebox, which is based out in uh, Asia. Are you looking to introduce this just on the KL to London Paris flights or across no, all, all Air, Air Asia X? All X flights first. We, as, as an airline, we would love to see the three euro price point as a, as a sort of gauge in terms of a per movie basis. Um, how much of that he gets and how much of that we get is, um, you know, <laughs> to be decided. Sorry. Hi. Hi, Azra. Steve from Flight of International. Um, right, just to follow up on that answer. So maybe the, the Singaporean low cost long haul may also want to. <laughs> maybe you could teach them a thing or two. Um, ancillary revenue right now yeah. uh, for Air Asia X. Yeah. How much money do you get from ancillary revenue and something like these and your initiatives, how much do you hope to increase it by as a percentage? Sure. So not necessarily uh, absolutely. Yeah, I think Today, or even if you look at last year, we were probably running at about 30 euros per passenger uh, on ancillary revenue. That's probably one of the highest in the world, if not the highest. Uh, big chunk of that is still your traditional stuff, uh, baggage, seats, meals, um, insurance. It starts to get smaller. Uh, I think there's definitely a potential to, uh, to bring that up by another 20 to 25% over the next few years with some of the new stuff. Uh, we just launched a fly through this year uh, where for a small fee you get to transfer and not have to worry about your bags. Uh, that's starting to show quite a bit of promise. That's another breakthrough. Uh, stuff like this will also I think be, uh, because this is not just about the movie content. The movie content is phase one, but it's also all that the data uh, streaming and services that, that can come with that. Uh, there'll be a lot of you know uh, cool things like you know, coupons and e-coupons and all that good stuff that, that can come out of it. I think on top of that, um, the way the, uh, we envisage this uh, in-flight statement solution working is uh, it will be a portal on the, on the aircraft. So we'll also offer sort of, uh, you'll be able to purchase uh, duty-free. Um, it might well be integration with Red Mega Store um, and lots of other sort of services, which I think uh, makes a lot of sense. And the idea is we want to have one 
wallet if you put your details in once and once you put those details in it's just click and buy very similar to the sort of the itunes uh, account system where you put your card details in and that's it how many passengers can it support at one time it's it's totally scalable uh, that's the beautiful thing about this. We built this on internet uh, video streaming technology. Uh, the idea is that uh, um, the main issues in the past with Wi-Fi streaming has been to do with actual bandwidth on the actual access points. Uh, so what we've done is we've incorporated something called adaptive bitrate streaming, which allows the system to automatically uh, adjust uh, the quality that everyone's getting based on uh, how many people are connecting. So this sounds like it's store content on the aircraft. Correct. And how, how often do you foresee yourself update the content? Um, we, we envisage, in the long term, we envisage having a very large selection of content. Um, and uh, we, have the, well, we will have the ability to be able to update it on a daily basis. So as and when the content comes out, uh, uh, we can update it. But uh, what's going to really differentiate us is because uh, we have this DRM, and it's auditable, it's a complete pay-per-view model. So the studios will basically give us the content and won't bill us for it until uh, the actual passenger watches it. So it means we can have entire libraries you know, without uh, any cost. So is it fair to say you're, you're essentially the content service provider role uh, and flight focus over here who do the EFBs are the hardware provider? Uh, yes, they're, um, they, they're providing the hardware for us, but it's something that we've, uh, we've designed together, uh, we've come to, uh, we've specified the product and they've come out and designed it. Uh, and at the same time we're leveraging off their existing service on the aircraft, which makes the so solution so low cost. And this is going to be offered obviously to other airlines together? Uh, it's it's in something that in the, in the future we will be uh, looking at. Uh, when we're working on version 3, they can have version 1. Uh. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I could actually show you, we've done some, uh, some video compression, some sort of encoding and transcoding, uh, and I could potentially show you that, uh, the sort of quality you're getting in standard definition. That's most probably the best I could show you today, uh, which just gives you an idea of the quality of the actual picture. Um, but I wouldn't be able to show you anything else, unfortunately. But, uh, soon. Will you uh, launch tests this year and then roll it out early next year? Is that the plan? Correct. Yeah. Okay. I know that Boeing tried to do that such uh, technologies in the past, and they were facing about uh, certification issues. Uh, so you have six all the two hours in the test and then exam for that? We, uh, we don't have uh, the STC yet. Okay. Uh, we're looking to achieve that uh, at the end of the year. Okay. Uh, but we basically uh, follow the sort of the standard guidelines uh, and we don't envisage any problems with actually getting the certification. Um, I think really the issue with what people have seen in the past in terms of failure with wireless uh, is mainly because of the actual bandwidth. But as I said earlier on, the actual technology that we've got gets around this. Okay. And whether the main and connection with the, the ground is, is not efficient? The uh, connection remains maybe even. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, it should be sufficient. <clears throat> you talked about a, a tablet. Can you disclose which tablet this is? <laughs> no, no, not at the moment. But, uh, it, it should be device neutral. I mean, I mean, the idea is that you could uh, actually pass me those tablets. It could be. Is it iPad free? <laughs> I mean, at the end of the day, it could be a tablet such as this, yeah. it could be uh, a phone like this, it could be a laptop. The idea is that you can bring your own device quite comfortably, yeah. connect to the system, yeah. and start streaming. Uh, alternatively, we will be providing some form of tablet. Um, as I said, we can't really disclose who that is right now. Um, and that will also incorporate a battery pack that will give us sufficient battery life for the whole flight.